Hello everybody, here we are for stage 6 of the Tour de France. It finishes on one of the most challenging climbs that the route ever sees, La Planche de Belfi. And we're going to try to keep the polka dot jersey with the Conrad if we can, and uh, get time for the yellow jersey with Emmanuel Buckman. So, I, uh, I recorded a little bit earlier, but I didn't get all of it, so here we are. Uh, with about 83 Ks left, and we are with Buckman here on the way down and about to uh, be ready for the intermediate sprint so we will turn to Peter Sagan didn't really miss much at the beginning a breakaway went out we tried to get Con right out there but it was unsuccessful he really couldn't keep up and his stamina is still pretty low from um, working pretty hard yesterday in yesterday's stage so that did not work but we have the mile on so it'll be interesting to see if Sagan can stay with the peloton really that much today um, we're going to definitely try to get the 13 points that we can here. And I'm not sure if any other sprinters will be going for it. We'll be looking for that green jersey of Arnaud de Mer, the Frenchman. Who's not really the green jersey. We are the green jersey. But since we are wearing yellow with Sagan, then he does not. Or he gets to wear the green jersey since he is in second place in those standings. So we're about 3Ks away. We can just get 13 points. And I really don't see there being much of a competition here at all. The de Kooning quick quickstep rider up there got the point. Sergio and now and Mikhail Nieve on Mezhelton Scott. Nicky is aren't getting ready. I'm not sure if we'll see it. Oh, Alexander Kristoff's here. Maybe he might launch a sprint. Michael Matthews is here as well. Uh, we might actually have some people contesting this intermediate sprint. I'm really not. Oh, they're all going a little bit faster than I expected. We got Matthews and Cole Brelli. We are going to outpower them, though. And we will win the intermediate sprint for the people in the peloton. Get 13 points to pad that large lead that we have. Gaviria was around. Ewan Demer got five points. And, you know, it's not really much of a competition because we are the only sprinter that's won a stage so far. We've won four out of the five stages. So that's a really, really good start for us. So now it's back to Buckman to see what we can do here. I don't want to waste too much energy with him. Um, I don't want to stay near the front, if that's possible. Uh, Conrad might lose that polka dot jersey. I'm not too confident in him. His energy was super low starting today, so I was not excited about that. And He got didn't get caught on camera, but he definitely could not stick with the breakaway, which is fine because we weren't really asking that of him. Let's get everybody some blue gel. Um, just to make sure we're all good. Because there is a feed zone coming up. So we will use the food while we have it. We only have one rider off the back. That's Daniel Oss. Louis Mankey's off the back. The good South African climber. So we're up near the front. I don't want to lead the peloton. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we're an overall contender. That's not really what we're trying to do. The leaders out front really aren't going to take the yellow jersey. If Sagan, Sagan excuse me, loses the peloton here, then I would see it going on Garrett Thomas because I believe he was the closest. Uh, Conrad, we'll switch to you for just one second so we can get those KOM points. One K away. I don't know if we'll have a real big sprint here, but um, we just want to get as many points as we can while we can get them. Hopefully nobody's going to contest this with us because we might actually crack right here with Conrad, but it really doesn't make a difference because we know he's not going to win it up. La Planche de Belfi. Okay, so we get over there first, and now back to Buckman. So it's really not an issue. Um, we uh, Hopefully we can keep that polka dot jersey for as long as we possibly can. But I'm not sure if that's possible. This is a fast descent, so supposed to be careful. There could be a fall. 
which I wouldn't be surprised about. And who knows, it could affect an overall guy, and that could help us out a lot. <laughs> it would really be helpful if it was Garrett Thomas. Because <laughs> if it was Tom, Thomas is in the best shape overall-wise out of everybody. So that would be best for us. I'd like to get to the front here in these uh, descents, in case there is a fall that we don't get held up by it. Ugh, ah. There's Roman Barde, Stephen Kreisfeich, the lot of Yumbo Rider, Lotto or not lot of Yumbo Yumbo Visma. They've had a really really strong start to the Tour de France this year. They had Mike Turnison in the uh, yellow jersey for the first couple of days and um, couldn't hold it in stage three, but what Trillian really now Flip does is incredible. He might be one of the funnest riders to watch. Alright, so we're not really going to be doing many of these upcoming climbs. We might do the top of that category 2, and then do the descent, and then do the run up to the La Planche de Belfi. Which, there will definitely be attacks for the overall guys that have lost time. Which, um, it'll be interesting to see which ones attack. One of the biggest attackers so far has been Primoz Roglic. He has attacked a bunch, so... We will see if he attacks here. But this is good for our stamina here. That blue bar getting pretty filled up. So we really don't need to do this category 2 because it's not really going to make a difference what happens there. Um, it'll be interesting to see if Sagan can stay with us throughout this whole time. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do probably the, near the top of the category 2. And then I'm going to do the descent there so we can make, because I'm good at the descents and getting full energy. So we're going to try to make sure that we have full energy on the way down and on the route to La Planche de Belfi. Um, so Berghart, we're going to give you a little bit of food. Uh, same with Conrad, because we just want you to stay up here as long as you can. Same with Postal Burger and, of course, Mulberger, the white jersey, which I don't really see lasting very long. But while we have it, it's nice. All right, so not much energy here for Buckman. He really gassed himself out on this climb, but to be fair, it is a tough climb. Um, just worried to see what he might, what, how much it might hurt him going up those HC climbs, which are the non-categorized ones, how high up they are. All right, so the peloton has been whittled down to about 40 riders. Mulberger's fallen off. Yeah, who else is in that group? Is Dan Martin in that group? Yeah, Dan Martin off the back. That's a big overall guy. Which Yates? Uh, Simon Yates. Oh, jeez, I got distracted. Simon Yates fell off the back. TJ Van Garderen, Rain Terame, Fabio Aru, Esteban Chavez. So that climb really got a lot of people uh, down. Wow. Impressive showing from Sagan, though, to stay, stay with it. Oh, I guess the Peloton. Is somebody attacking up there? Roman Barde? No, nobody's attacking. Wow. I thought somebody was attacking. It looked like an AG2R rider. It wouldn't be against Robin Bardet to attack on a descent. And there's um, Julian Alaphilippe. I wouldn't be surprised to see him make an attack to try to get the stage win of La Planche de Belfi. So we really want to get as much energy as we possibly can here before that big climb that I've mentioned oh, so many times now. But it's a one-man breakaway now. It's Mikel Nieve, the former Team Sky rider, now Team Enios. Now for Mitchelton Scott. Was one of Froome's best wingman with, like, Mikel Landa, Luke Rowe. And even Garrett Thomas was a wingman at that point. So I'm just staying in the aerodynamic position for now. So I can have max energy heading up. There's a oh, Valverde looks like he got a little bit of a gap there. He must have flew down that descent. So Adam Yates has fallen off the peloton. Both the Yates twins from Michelton Scott are off the back. Um, so 48 guys left in the peloton and one breakaway rider. 
So what we're going to do here is just wait to see if anybody decides to attack, uh, and we'll attempt to follow them. If we can't, then we'll just take what we can get and not crack so we don't lose as much time as we potentially could by uh, blowing up and cracking. So, yeah, we have Mikel Nieve out there about one minute ahead of the peloton. Uh, Laplanche is not that long of a climb, but it is so, so steep. But it'll be interesting to see if Nieve will be brought back here, if somebody's, if a puncher's going to go for the stage. Um, so uh, we'll see where this goes. So the white jersey's back, which is uh, Mulberger, yeah. Mulberger from our team, and looks like there is an attack already. Vincenzo Nibali, and we have to follow the attacks, no matter how much it might hurt us. We have to follow them because we want to be with that group that's that select group of riders that go up the mountains the fastest. Tom Dumoulin's there. Uh, Nairo Quintana's up there. So we just got to push, 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 because that was an early, early attack from Nibali up La Planche. So we're just going to follow Richie Port for now. That seems like the smart thing to do. So this group of nine has Rigoberto Uran, Nairo Quintana, Primoz Roglic, Vincenzo Nibali, Thibaut Pino, Richie Port, us, Warren Bargui, Mikhail Nieve, and Tom Dumoulin. Surprise, Garrett Thomas didn't make an attack, but looks like Ineos is probably trying to bridge this gap, and it looks like everybody's about back together. So that attack really did not work for Nibali. Which I'm surprised to see Nibali being so punchy already. Wow. Um, I'm just going to make sure that Sagan eats here. So he can try to make it up. Um, Mulberger fell off, which isn't surprising. So Sagan is still with this lead group up La Planche, but I assume another attack would definitely hurt him a lot. So we're just going to fill up this blue bar now. And see if we can maybe get it all the way up. And Roglic is pushing up there. I don't have enough. I don't want to risk the response. I'm going to hope that Roglic just... Um, that we either catch him or he cracks... Cause I didn't want to. I didn't want to be the first one to react because I didn't want to be out in another attack that got caught out. Um, Rowan Dennis has fallen off. Miguel Angel Lopez, I think that is, he's fallen off. Mikel Nieve, who was the breakaway rider, he fell off. Uh, our boy Conrad, the polka dot jersey, he fell off the back. Um, somebody's cracking. It's an Astana rider. Primoz Roglic, 27 seconds ahead on the road here. Um, So this has been whittled down to 18, and the Sagan is still here. <laughs> wow, Peter. That's impressive. And is Valverde going to attack? It looks like Valverde went up the right side of the road there just to get to the front of this group. Did not attack. Uh, Michael Kwiatkowski has cracked. So that's day done for him, protecting Garrett Thomas. Quintana's cracking. Nairo Quintana has cracked up this climb. See, we knew how challenging La Planche de Belfi was. And I had mentioned it. Sagan is still with us, which is very, very impressive. Gonna give him some red gel here so he has something to hydrate himself with. Um, Egon Bernal, Garrett Thomas still around. <laughs> I'm so impressed with Sagan, though. I don't know how he's doing it. So, 1k left, and I think it's time for an attack for me. So we're going to push to see if we can maybe get up the road and get close to Roglic. But the road has is so steep here. So could we bridge this gap to Roglic? We are going. I'm not sure if we'll have enough. I want to save as much. I want to save some energy because it's going to get really, really steep here. Oh, man. Look, it's 20% up. 22%. This is how challenging La Planche de Belfi is. We're going to go by Roglic. We are almost out of energy. We're going to give it another push. 
Will we crack? It's still going to be really steep. Oh, we crack, but will Roglic have enough time? No, he doesn't. Emmanuel Buckman for Bora with a late attack in the last 1,000 meters. We win our fifth stage out of the six in this Tour de France. Man, that was an exciting climb up La Planche de Belfi. Nairo Quintana cracked, but we kept strong. Peter Sagan <laughs> held with that peloton, which was very, very impressive. So we might have the yellow jersey for another day. I'm not sure. I was surprised about that stage win. Wow. Good job, Buckman. The play for German. So let's see where the uh, where the jerseys fall, the classifications. So we know we won the stage, of course, with Emmanuel Buckman. Last rider is still 2Ks from the finish. Must not have been an easy day for him. He must have cracked really early on. <laughs> yeah, I, those last thousand meters of La Planche de Belfi are so, so steep. So we bridge the gap to Roglic here. And we decided to make that one last little attack that we had left in us. Right about here. Right at its steepest. Oh man, I couldn't imagine climbing that in real life. It's so steep. We cracked before the line, but Roglic didn't have enough. Was that Sagan? The yellow jersey of Peter Sagan finished top three at this stage. I wasn't even controlling him either. Wow, I didn't think Sagan was that good. His mountain rating is like 70 or something. That's ridiculous. So Emmanuel Buckman, us, wins the stage at La Planche de Belfi. The yellow jersey still, of course, us, Peter Sagan. The green jersey is us, Peter Sagan. The polka dot jersey is the UAE rider. I'm not sure which UAE rider was up there. Uh, Sergio Anau. Yeah, yeah, he was up in the breakaway. So former sky rider, Anau. The great, great puncher is now the polka dot jersey. And the white jersey is on Team Enios, and I would assume it's Egon Bernal. Yeah, it is Egon Bernal. So, the young Colombian, the really, really good climber, is now the white jersey in this Tour de France. So, how much time do we gain on our rivals here? Let's see. So, we gained 28 seconds on Roglic, and Sagan actually got second. <laughs> wow. So, Thomas was close to 37 seconds back from us. Demoulin, Uran were at 106, then 122 is Dan Martin, who fell off the back at one point. Egon Bernal, Jakob Fulsang, Vincenzo Nivoli, 140, was Thibaut Pino, 150, Valverde, and 211, Nairo Quintana. So a lot of people had trouble up La Planche. We did not. So the overall standings, we have Emmanuel Buckman in fourth, so that's a good chance for the yellow jersey, if I'm going to be honest with you. And we have Sagan still in yellow, but I don't know if that's going to really last very much longer. Um, Polka Dot Conrad is not leading anymore right now, right there. But Buckman might be close. Yeah, he gets 11 points and a decent amount for winning on La Planche. Uh, Sagan, green jersey by a mile. Bernal, uh, white jersey by only four seconds. Scotchman, our rider, and then Mulberger's third. Team classification, Bohr all the way, and the combativity award is, uh, this guy, Van Kiersburg, still. He's been there for a while. So that was the first mountain stage. We got the win, so Bohr's good fortunes are continuing. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.